Yo, what up guys? Welcome to my video, Jack's off to Cambodia. So day four, you go to a steakhouse, you get the steak. You go to a women's house, you get consent, and then you get laid. You go to Cambodia, you have to go to Angkor Wat. So for those of you who are not too familiar, there's a bunch of these ancient religious temples by Siem Reap, and basically it's like one of the most popular attractions in the entire world. So first, you got Angkor Wat, which is like the main temple. Then you also got these lesser known temples that are also around the area. Some people will spend a few days checking out the temples, but for myself, I only plan on spending one day only because I was kind of scared I might get too tired of looking at temples. Alright, so we got up before the sunrise to get my ticket. Got the one day pass for like 37 bucks. A lot of people would choose to start their adventures with an Angkor Wat sunrise because the sun rises behind the temple, so it's supposed to be a very sick looking sunrise. But, there's hell of people there. I don't like dealing with hell of people, so I decided to go check out the sunrise at this water reservoir known as Sarasarang. Did I make the right decision coming here instead? I don't know, but Sarasarang was sure quiet though. The day before I had Vidak, and now it's Madden's turn to babysit me. One good thing about traveling solo, I can travel by hopping on a bike and it's super convenient. You know, weaving through narrow paths, going through shortcuts, having random encounters with locals and their cows. The next temple Madden took me was called the Bayon Temple. In terms of beauty, Madden told me Bayon is supposed to rival Angkor Wat, but I was kind of skeptical because if it was the same level as Angkor Wat, why don't you hear more about Bayon? Anyways, so I was the first person here, or so I thought. Then I see these little kids, and this one was like super excited to see me. Hi. Then they kind of just disappeared. And they didn't even try to sell me anything. I guess this place is like a giant playground to them. I mean, it's also a giant playground for people like me too. So the Bayon Temple is famous because there are faces carved all over the temple. It's also got these wall carvings too. But for real though, this place is like perfect to play tag or paintball in or parkour. The Bayon Temple is in this area called Angkor Tom, aka the ancient city. There's temples of all sizes scattered around this area. So when I was done with the Bayon Temple, I made my way to the Bafuan Temple, which was pretty much right next to Bayon. It's got this long pathway that takes you to the main temple, which kind of looks like a pyramid. You can actually climb to the top with these tourist ladders. It's probably a safety precaution, but still, doesn't feel as authentic if you can't climb the original steps. The temple was like what, four or five stories tall? Kind of feels like another Stairmaster workout. But you get rewarded with a nice view from up top. Once I came back down and exited Bafuan to find Madden, I ran into these random temples hidden in the jungle. Then once I found Madden, we're off to our next location. Alright, so Madden dropped me off here in the middle of the jungle. He said this is a temple. I should go inside and adventure for a little bit. Let's see what's in here. I'm hoping Madden dropped me off here because there's supposed to be a temple, but it uh, doesn't look too promising right now. Hopefully we'll find something. I guess I found some people here, so there should be some, some kind of attraction. Turns out, they were headed to the Top Prom Temple. So Top Prom is famous because nature overtook it. Just look at that tree growing on top of that temple. 
You also got a few portions of the temple that crumbled. Dude, this place just looks hella abandoned. This is what it looks like when nature fights back. And did I mention how freaking hot it is here? Just look at everyone chilling in the shade. After I was done with Top Prom, I met up with Madden and we went to go get something to eat real quick. The good thing about hanging out with Madden and his crew, when it comes to food, they'll take you to places where they go, and not some tourist trap that has a special menu catered to tourists. Cause yeah, I wanna eat what the locals eat too. Like some chicken, some rice, soup, and it was like what, a dollar? Hella worth it. This was my last and the biggest temple for a day. Angkor Wat has two main entrances. You got the east side, the front, and you got the west side, back. Madden dropped me off on the west side because there's no traffic. Everyone's entering from the east side because that's the front. In reality, I explored Angkor Wat in reverse, but for the sake of this video, I'll edit it so that it looks like I came in from the east. Compared to every other temple, Angkor Wat was at a completely different level. It's way bigger, even got its own grass field. It's very well maintained, and they probably did some renovations here and there. I mean, this is the main temple. Everyone came to Cambodia just to see this. Honestly, it feels more like a palace than a religious temple. The interesting thing is, back then, a couple hundred years ago, this place was packed with hell of people fulfilling their religious commitments. Fast forward to today, this place is still hella packed with people, but they're fulfilling their social media commitments instead. It's kind of like, this place never died. It's always had hella people here, just with different intentions. After exploring this entire place, I was getting a little sick of looking at temples. Also, it was hella hot, so time to head back to the village. Alright, so let's do a quick breakdown of all the places I went on this day. First, we had the water reservoir, Sara Sarang. Sara Sarang was actually a very nice place for a sunrise, because first you got the water reflection, but most importantly, there's like no one here. But if you don't give two dams about sunrises, then I would say just skip this place. Next, we have the Temple of Many Faces, the Bayon Temple. I'd say the Bayon Temple is a must-see. Aside from the unique design, it's also the second largest temple, and also it's very well preserved. The temple officially opens at 7.30, but I kind of snuck in there at like 7. And even when I left like an hour later, I didn't really see much people. After Bayon, we got Bafuan, aka the Stairmaster Temple. In terms of the view from the temple, I'd say this is my favorite one because you get to see the surrounding environment from a higher angle. Personally, from all the temple photos I took, I'd say Bat Phuong was probably my favorite. Next, we have Top Prom, the temple overran by nature. The temple itself is like, whatever, but when you add the element of nature, it's a truly unique sight. I'd say it's a must-see after Angkor Wat and Bayon. Last but not least, you got Angkor Wat, the main attraction of Cambodia. When it's the main attraction of the entire country, you know you gotta go check it out. And you know there's gonna be a hell of people there too. And of course, there's a reason why this place is the main attraction in all of Cambodia. I won't say much, but I'll tell you for sure, if you go to Cambodia, you will visit Angkor Wat. Due to all the walking and the blistering hot weather, by the time I was done with Angkor Wat, I was like so done, dude. I'd say the route I took was pretty decent for me because you start off with a very peaceful sunrise and then you end with a bang. However, if I was a more dedicated photographer, I'd probably go with a three-day pass, you know? Just go check out the sunrise and sunsets at different temples. So, one of my friends asked me what, what's the situation like for a bathroom? Let me show you what's up. So here's the village right here. That's my, that's my room. So here's the bathroom right here. So first, water here. There's a lot of water, not like California. You gotta stick this hose through here. Here's the bathroom. So if you want to shower, you turn on the hose, you shower with cold water right here. And how does this work? The toilet, it don't flush. So you gotta, after you take a shit, this is how you flush it. You go whoo! And there you go. This is village life. Oh, the sink? You think the sink works, but Water goes through there, falls right here. So, if you want to wash your face, you want to wash your ass, brush your teeth, the hose. There you go. This was going to be my last night here at this village. 
I'm really going to miss this village sunset here. So one last time to soak it all in. Once it got dark, it was actually the first night where all the guests had dinner together. You got the Australian family, a German couple, Madden's friends, and me. We just ate, drank some beer, and just chilled. Screaming. And we look at him and he's got his shoes kicked off before, you know, as he's stupidly taking his shoes off and trolls. Alright guys, so that's how that day ended, and that's how this video is going to end as well. For those of you who are interested in more details and more information about my experiences, please make sure to check out my blog. The link is in the description below. Hopefully this vlog and my blog will help you in some way if you plan on visiting some of the places I went. With that said, thank you guys for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until my next video, Jack is off! <laughs>